Hi everyone, um, I'm Lisa from Dragonfly Handmade here in Kingston um, and uh, I'm taking over the Visit Kingston live on their Instagram for the next half an hour so uh, welcome to everybody who's joining. Um, I'm going to start just telling you a little bit about myself. Um, so I have been in Canada here for 21 years this month. Um, emigrated from Manchester in the UK um, and uh, yeah ca Canada is amazing obviously I stayed here and I never left Kingston and why did I never leave Kingston because Kingston's awesome um, Kingston has everything I need throughout the years of raising children and ev everything and I've seen how you know the changes in Kingston over the years too um, which has been fantastic and just seen more and more and more and no more than the past few years, the past almost five years that I started my business, um, the community spirit within this city. Um, it's, ju it's just fantastic how everybody supports everybody, especially small businesses. Hi T-Rex. <laughs> um, yeah, especially small businesses. So I started my business, um, in all honesty, after a period of uh, serious illness and I needed something to do. Um, I needed a, um, an outlet. I needed therapy, basically. So I had, at the time, had four dogs and I was walking with the dogs obviously every day and we lived um, north of the city then so we were surrounded with Parkland and what have you and one day the dog brought one of the dogs brought a, a branch back and like said no you're not bringing it in the house off you go threw it in the garage and a few days later I went in the garage and it was a really lovely um, branch of spalted maple and I just looked a little closer at it and then uh, I cut it in half and thought, well, that's kind of neat, you know? So I did the same thing to a few other pieces and then the creative cogs started turning and I came up with basically what I do, which is what you see behind me. Um, and it's wood slice art and home decor. So I take all kinds of wood as long as it's fallen. I only use fallen and reclaimed wood. The only time I will take a branch from a tree um, is if it needs pruning, if the branch is damaged, like you would find me, not unusually, at City Park, because I now live downtown, um, at City Park with a pair of pruners and like looking if a branch is damaged, I'll just lop the thing off. <laughs> so I'm that woman. Um, so yeah, and then I dry the wood and slice it and then come up with the designs and and then make it up. So it's almost like doing, it's, it's, it's basically like mosaic. Um, some people would do staying, um, use glass for mosaic, I use wood. Um, it's really cool because every branch is different. Every tree is different, every branch is different. Um, I can start slicing a branch and it changes from the first slice to the last slice. So with all the will in the world, I could never do two pieces that are the same. Um, so whenever I make a piece, you, you guaranteed getting a very unique piece. So it's just been a case of over the years, I've just let the business um, and what I do evolve organically um, for all intents of the word. Um, just to kind of, I'll experiment. And if, it, if a piece doesn't work out, I can take a silhouette. If it doesn't work out, then it keeps me warm. <laughs> It'll go on the bonfire. Um, so, uh, but a lot of pieces have worked out. And honestly, I am now addicted <laughs> to doing new pieces, doing new designs. Um, it's really cool because I do a lot of custom work now too. Um, and you know, people will come to me and say, I have this kind of breed dog. Um, I did a plot hound. I'd never heard of a plot hound, and I'm a dog person. I've never heard of a plot hound, but I did Maynard the plot hound for a very nice lady um, whose dog means the world to her. And um, yeah, and it turned out really cool. And I've done a little wiener dog that even though it was done 
in wood slices when I finished it I was so happy because that little wiener dog had sass you could see the sass emanating from from this piece and then when people especially the the uh, custom pieces when people say to me oh my god that I it's just what I wanted I, I didn't know what I was gonna get because they put all their faith in me they just kind of give me a vague outline or something and um, hi to everybody joining thank you so much um, they give me a vague outline of what they want and then say you know what I'm gonna leave it to your creative um, ideas um, sometimes I'll do a sketch and, and send that back and work with the client a little bit um, but more often than not they just leave it to me and I, I don't think I've ever had anybody that's unhappy not that they've told me anyway <laughs> um, so yeah it's it's a really cool thing to do I am so glad I kind of, it just kind of evolved and it just happened but you know what sometimes the best things in life happen when you're not looking for them um, and it was at a time in my life that I very much needed something to motivate me um, as, as a therapy and, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not shy about it. I'm not going to bore anybody with details, but after a long illness, there was a lot of mental um, therapy that needed to go on. You know, there was a lot of depression that happened. Um, there was no stigma where I'm concerned about that kind of thing. Um, and you know what? You, I, I will always say to people, just do what you want to do. Do something. Find something that makes you happy. Try new things. You know, don't be afraid to have a go at something. And now, all these years on that I'm doing it, and I've now got my studio at the Tet Center um, full time. I've been here nearly five months. Um, I can offer workshops to people, so I get to um, share what I do with people. And and now I kind of take it for granted a little bit, in that I I've got in such a, a groove with what I do and how the wood looks and and how it cuts and how it looks once it's been um, sealed at the end, how the color changes, it enhances the grain, that kind of thing. Um, but to see people who have not done it before, to see them do it in a workshop and they just love it. And that's so exciting and so rewarding for me. So I'm really enjoying doing that. And I've put together um, some take home kits so people can do them at home. And then again, they send me a photograph saying, oh my God, I did this, look, it's not quite like yours, but it, I'm so pleased with it. Um, and it's hanging on my wall. And I think at this point in time with what we're going through now, one of the most touching things I've had as feedback over just like this last week, I've been doing the kits and making them up and, and no contact delivery to people um, in the Kingston area. And this lady bought the heart kit and she sent me a photograph the next day and it was already hanging on her front door and she put it on the front door as a um, show a heart for healthcare workers display a heart for healthcare workers that they were doing in their neighborhood. And it was one of my hearts um, that she'd purchased and and made up to put on her door. And you know what, it actually made me cry and gave me goosebumps because that just meant such a lot to me. Um, and she did a, a really good job too. So that's kind of basically, so what I'm gonna do now, cause you don't wanna look at my face throughout this whole 30 minutes, cause that's just not cool. Um, I'm going to take the ca my phone and I am going to flip the camera um, and I'm going to show you around my studio, which stays in the Tet Center. Tet Center, if you haven't been, I can't imagine you haven't been. Uh, if you live in Kingston and you haven't been to the Tet, then you need to go when it's open. We're actually closed right now to the public because of um, COVID-19. But when it's open again, and we will be, this will all be over and we'll be open again. You need to come. Amazing place, uh, so much going on. In the meantime, why don't you look on their website, the Tet Center for Creativity and Learning, go onto their website, have a look, um, have a look at all the people that are in the Tet here, um, myself plus eight other individual artists, we all um, rent our spaces here, but the Pottery Guild is here, the Lapidary Club is here, the 
uh, weaving club is here, dance studios, galleries, so many things. Hi, Grace. Um, so many things in here. So you can take this time that you can't go anywhere in your homes to have a look at the Tet website and figure out a plan of what you would like to do when it's open again um, and get involved um, because it's fantastic. Um, also, I should say, take a look at my website, um, dragonflyhandmade.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Go straight to the website um, and then it can link you straight to um, my Instagram page and my Facebook page and take a look. And I'm always putting things on there to, you know, like not just what I do, but other things too. I'm, I'm a very, I'm a pretty transparent person. So um, I'm always putting weird things on there. But for now, I'm going to stop chattering up storm and, um, and show you my studio. And I'll be talking at the same time too. Hi, Michelle. I miss you. Michelle's one of, uh, Michelle's just joined and she's uh, one of my um, neighbors here at the Tet and we're not seeing each other. I am coming in just to, to uh, calm everybody. I am in my studio. My studio here is very private. It's only me that, that comes in it, um, especially now. Um, so it's like an extension of my home. So I am kind of staying I, I am staying home apart from the odd time I've gone out for groceries and then I come to the tet to my studio um to work on a few things it's it's my private space I come in and uh the door's closed and it's just it's just me around here so but I will also introduce you to somebody very important in my life um and very it's he's a very important team member for um Dragonfly Handmade and that is Pongo and um, Pongo is one of my dogs I also have Tucker and a grand doggy called Sophie um but Pongo is the biggest one and brings back the biggest branches and he's in here he's quite often with me in the studio but he's with me today and here is Pongo He's under his blank. Oh, there's his head. <laughs> uh, Pongo, can we say hi without your blankie, please? So this is Pongo, Great Dane. Um, he had a good run. There's his ball, and uh, he's he's a bit he's a bit tired now so I'm gonna cover him back up because he does like his blankie he doesn't have a lot of fur and what fur he have is um, it's kind of quite sparse we get as chilly that's Pongo um, I'm also going to show you it's kind of my view um, outside here at the Tet so we've got the Isabel Bader there and Lake Ontario and uh, so that's kind of cool so yeah, just to show you a couple of things while we're going around here. Um, those are some Christmas trees that we made at Christmas. I did a workshop for those. So again, you can see in that all the different types of wood that I use. I use about eight to 10 different um, varieties of wood in my wood art pieces. Um, and it can be anything. I'll, I'll use anything. Maple, cedar, cherry. Um, if you've got any trees that have come down and you've got some really neat wood, just let me know. And you never know, I might um, just uh, sneak into your yard and grab it. Um, all wood is dried and, um, and cleaned up. Sometimes I can be slicing a branch and um, bugs and, and not nice things come out. So that gets tossed back into the woods. Um, but yeah, and I slice it and dry it and everything else. And then these um, actually have, you probably can't see it here, but we put wrapped the little tiny um, lights on here. I don't know, I've not had them on for a while, so excuse my arm in the way there. Um, but they have lights on, oh, there we go. So they have lights on for Christmas, but you know what? A tree isn't just for Christmas, it's all year round. So um, you can, I know people who bought those at Christmas time and they uh, they still have them up. So here's my beautiful Tet studio with the, obviously the limestone walls and um, all kinds of things there. So we've got here, um, the map is, I think pretty much my signature piece. Um, I've done that one here of that size, which is approximately two foot by three foot, is um, the 17th map of that size I've done. Um, I kind of strayed a little bit differently there. I did one on the pale background with the reclaimed wood border, um, and then a slightly smaller one. Um, and then I do a lot of the lakes. 
So this is the first one I did of the Great Lakes. It's not quite finished, it's gotta be sanded and varathaned. And you can see between the two here, that's exactly the same, um, but you can see once it's varathaned, um, how it really makes the color of the wood pop. Um, the grain and the color um, and just like deepens that whole thing there. So um, I was supposed to be doing Cottage Life show um, in Toronto um, at the end of, well, now, actually, now. I was supposed to be doing Cottage Life, so I've got a studio full of stuff. Um, but as with everything right now, it was cancelled, so I was gearing up to do a lot of the lakes. I'm just going to wave to everybody because there's lots of people joining. So again, thank you so much for you uh, joining me. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the lakes. I've also started doing here a lot of resin work. I'm really enjoying doing the resin work. So I'm just going to flip the camera here so I can... Oh, yeah, I'm not very technological minded. Oh, there, there we go. So um, with the resin work, these are some trays I've been doing. Um, this is a table. So it's just a, a, a very cute little coffee table. So I, as with any piece I do, I set the, the, the wood in place, but with some of them, it's, um, it's really strange. I'm trying to find one. Oh, right. I show you on this one and this one isn't quite finished but this one um, it's got to be oiled yet and it's just been sanded but you can just see the wood in there so I did that you've probably all seen those river tables that um, the live edge and the oh, I mean, the fantastic um, so that's my version of a river table um, but I'm doing them as charcuterie boards so these are all ready to be final sanded and oiled and those were cool because you have to do the resin in a couple of pours um, to then put the small wood pieces in. It's not just a case of sluicing the resin in and letting it cure. I have to do it in two or three pours to then put the wood pieces in. So then they're suspended in the resin, rather like this one. But I did that on a backboard. Um, we've got some cedar pieces in there and the start of some... Um, Oh, I shouldn't turn my camera, should I? Because you all go sideways when I do that. So anyway, that's, um, that's another board there. So resin is really cool because it, once it's cured, it's, it's super tough. The only thing with these being um, uh, for food is that the resin is food safe. It's non-toxic. It is food safe. So you can put, even on the trays like this one, you can put food right onto it. And, um, and then just wipe it all off, or you can use it, sit somewhere and put candles on it, do what you like with it, use it however you would use a tray. So um, a couple of them I've done some nice designs in. That one's a darker wood. I always try and put really nice handles on, um, just to kind of, even though it's reclaimed wood and it's fallen wood, um, I like to put nice handles on. I love these handles. Um, but put the nice handles on it kind of elevates it a little bit because I don't just want my work to be for a cottage and <laughs> high flow next door literally in the studio next door um, so a colorful crow there um, so it's not just for the cottage and that's one of the reasons I started doing um, some of the pieces on the dark wood and the gray because it gives it a little more of a contemporary look um, which people are liking um, you know it, it's rustic but at the same time it gives it a contemporary look so uh, rather than the the complete reclaimed the reclaimed wood look like this one um, so yeah, so and those are some more charcuterie boards there. These are actually finished um, and ready to go. So with these, it's reclaimed wood from um, used pallets, skids, whatever you like to call them. And I, I take them and like I, I cut them in the way that I keep all the old holes and nails. Believe me, they're all ground down, they're all cleaned out, they're all sanded really, really smooth. But I just love the character that this old weathered wood has. So then in this case, I um, just use a router and route a freeform shape 
but then keep to my style and my signature style, which is using the wood slices. Inset those, pour resin over top, and then you've got a beautiful charcuterie board, as you can see, um, ready for anything. And then you can just wash it off afterwards in hot soapy water, leave it out to dry, and you're good to go again. Um, and it looks really, really cool as a piece of kitchen art or dining room art. Um, fun little thing, I have just call them charcuterie boards because that's mostly what they're called. But when I've been at a show, I've been calling them gathering boards. Hey, it's me again. Um, I've been calling them gathering boards because you don't have to put charcuterie on them. You don't have to put cheese on them. You can put chocolate on them. You can put desserts on them. At the end of the day, it's one of those things, and it's a style of eating that personally my family, hi Adele, oh I miss you, <laughs> um, that my family love. Um, I've always had the policy in our house that if you're in the house at dinner time, you eat at the table. It could be grilled cheese or it could be a full meal. It doesn't matter. You're at the table and, um, and we eat together. So this kind of thing for me, it's all about gathering, spending time together. So put what you want on these boards and these trays. Just gather, enjoy time together. Make that meal time last a bit longer. I must admit, I do have a bit of a struggle with my 11 year old when the adult members of the family are, are, are talking and, and we're off on whatever we're talking about and he gets, he can get a little bit bored. So he might be excused before the rest of us. Um, but brought back to do the dishes, yes. Um, anyway, so those are the boards of the resin. That's cool, I'm gonna flip it round again. Um, so this is a table right now that I've just gotta finish coloring, um, staining the legs. And, um, but this table has been earmarked by my lovely daughter, who's just moved into her new place back in Kingston because she's moved back from Jasper and um, yeah she she a mama um, I, I could do with a little coffee table so this is going to go to Abby's house um, this week when I finished it and uh, that's a nice little housewarming gift for Abby um, yeah no no Adele I haven't put a plastic goldfish in it <laughs> well I could have done somewhere couldn't I I could have hidden one in there um, so anyway, now we'll go around and see a few other things. These are all the things I've got ready for um, making up the, the wood slice kits for homes. Um, some stuff that just different. Um, I don't know what inspires me to do different things sometimes, but this little piece right here, um, just very simple uh, with the balloons. It reminds me of the movie Up which I love that movie, it's on my list to watch while we're all kind of in quarantine. Um, flowers, you can see by doing this, the way I cut the wood, not like on a firm slice, but I, I turn the wood and cut it on the long side. So you just get it, it, again, it's still using the fallen wood, but using it and then with some bark at the bottom and preserved moss, which is moss soaked in glycerin. Um, so it keeps its color um, and you know what just just it's just a, a, a fun little piece a cute little piece it, it makes me smile um, and then like on a lot of those kind of pieces I put one of the little um, uh, plaques here like this one embrace imperfection and boy we all need to do that you know what it doesn't matter who we are what we are what we look like anything else We've got to embrace imperfection um, this was a piece I did, um, I love to do wood burning too, and I have a really nice wood burning kit. Um, so this one is a live edge piece of pine, as you can see, and then the, the wood that it's on here was given to me by a friend um, up near Coburg who has basically a sawmill. So he was, he was kind of slicing off um, to, to level out the piece of wood and this is a very thinly sliced piece of spalted maple and and that's exactly kind of how it came off so i kept it it's very organic shape and then followed the lines to do a color wash 
and then the wood burning of the Toronto skyline. Um, I've got one in the works for Kingston too, but um, all these lines here, the black lines, are the natural spalting in the wood, which is basically the fungus. So you see that there. Also, you can see the spalting. I'm going to take you back over here in this wood here. So this is birch. Um, and then you can see all the black lines are just the fungus in the wood. And then when it's dried, um, it, it just leaves those beautiful markings. I love any spalted wood. Um, so that was cool. So I've done that one. And then I'm, I'm not a painter. So all my friends that paint, please don't be too critical. But um, this piece up here was, um, again, the, the spalted maple, and I color washed it and did, wood burned the trees and the bulrushes, and uh, it just made a, a nice little piece there. And again, one here. This one really lent itself. I loved this. Actually, I really like this one, and I love doing this one. I love the colors in it, but again, this here, the natural spalting just kind of lent itself to that kind of landscape and that was a fun one to do um what have we got next i'm whizzing around here i don't know how much time i've got <gasps> time's almost up doesn't time fly um so yeah oh that's me so <laughs> a nice big mirror um one of the things i really want to get across to people is nature provides us so many beautiful things um you just have to look for it so for years and years and years, obviously we go walking, I go walking with my dogs, and you don't know what you're walking all over until you really start looking at it. And then I really started looking at it and then using it. So that mirror, I do lots of mirrors, um, but that mirror in particular, I encroached on the mirror because one of my favorite quotes is, um, I walk into the forest and come out feeling taller than the trees. And I don't know about you, but sometimes whenever you've got a cloudy head or you're having some difficulties with something, I like to go for a walk and just get away from everything. And I come out and undoubtedly I feel better. So that was kind of my interpretation of that. There's so many things I could show you and I don't know where the time's gone. I was so um, nervous about doing this because I don't do live things. Um, but the time's like really skipped by. Um, so yeah. Um, but Kingston, it, like Kingston for me, the, the support that I've been shown in my journey um, is, is just incredible. And Adele's just reminded me, but I've got it here on my iPad to show you. Oh, I did. I don't know where it's not. Oh, hang on one second, because I do have to show you this because it was it's like another um, fantastic piece. So years ago, um, I was asked by Matt Day at Days on Front restaurant in Kingston if I would come in and see him. I thought he wanted a, a coat rack because I do big coat racks. So I thought he wanted a coat rack. Um, he didn't. Matt looked at me and he said, no, I don't want a coat rack. I want the whole wall done in wood slices. Can you do it? So of course I said, yeah, because my dad always told me to say, yeah, and figure it out later. So this i'm going to show you a photograph if you haven't seen it this is the wall at days on front fantastic restaurant um and that was the wall that's lots it's 25 foot by five foot four i remember it <laughs> vividly um and then from that a really nice couple went for lunch one day and they had um this wall in a converted uh, a renovated um, cottage on the Napanee River and they were just waiting to figure out what they were going to do with the wall as a feature wall and they went for lunch at Days on Front and then I was commissioned to do this wall which is also a wall I'm in love with. Um, so I do large applications too um, but anyway so that's that's oh no what am I doing yeah there we go. So I'm gonna be signing off because I think it's almost time. I'm getting, I'm gonna get kicked out. <laughs> um, but thank you to everybody for joining me. Honestly, if you wanna know a little bit more, please check out my website, dragonflyhandmade.com. Um, I think this uh, video is being kept on the Visit Kingston 
um, Instagram page. So make sure you keep following Visit Kingston. Um, apart from anything, they do an amazing job on bringing people to our city. Maybe the things that we see every day, um, other people we know people need to see. Um, you know, and, and especially now that people might be a little hesitant to be um, traveling um, by plane, going abroad, going to places. That, that's going to take a little bit of time to for people to become more um, comfortable again with, with traveling. So we might see a little more staycations. Um, and people coming to our fair city. So we have so much to show them. Um, the art scene, the music scene, God, the hip at Kingston, like the tragically hip, come on. Um, it, there's so many, but you're gonna see so many people over the coming weeks. Please stay following them because this kind of presentation by somebody different every day is going to be made by somebody in Kingston and you need to keep following along to see everybody and then when all this COVID-19 nightmare is over we look forward to welcoming you to my studio to our studios to the set tet center to our restaurants to our historic sites to our UNESCO world sites everything I can't say enough about this city. It's been so great for me and I just want everybody else to know how amazing it is too. So thank you for, for joining me and I hope to see you again sometime soon. Take care everybody, stay safe, stay home and um, you know, just let's plank the curve. Okay, bye.